Danny and my, and my lovely wife, Alora Shedder, and you know, we've been coming to Path Point since October of 2016, and it wasn't by mistake. Okay, it, we were in a major crisis um, in 2016. You know, um, we 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 lost almost everything at that time. You know, we lost you know our house, and um, we were major debt financially. Uh, it was it was very 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 uh, breathtaking. Uh, it was we didn't know what to do but go to church and get rooted. And so when we when we started coming here, um, you know, we put everything into place of, of, of putting God in, in our relationship and, and coming together as a family. And, um, you know, f in 2020, we, we got that, right? Um, I mean, financially, we, you know, uh, we were able to, not only did we get our house back a, a, a couple, a, a year or two before that, but now we were able to, you know, finally remodel it, something that we never thought was going to happen. And then with the kids. Yeah, so we've got more time as a family than we've ever had in the past with our family. And that's something we've been praying for for years, to have that family time and have just a lot of time together to get to bring our kids to church as a family and just root them in. And that's just, we had prayed for that for so long. Everything that is just falling into place that we never even thought was possible is happening now because of, what we have put into this and what God has done for us over the last few years. And the biggest thing now is that we know, you know, that he's not stopping. And we see it, we can feel it, and just the love between me and Alora and the love in our family and our what we're seeing, the outcome of our kids and, and then even financially as well is is above and beyond. And you know, reading about the miracles and hearing about miracles and Pastor Scott talks, talking about miracles and hearing about other things, it's like, man, that'd be great if that happened to me. And it's happening. You know, we're living, I told the Lord that, we're, uh, we're living that right now. Multiplication is here. Uh, we can feel the alignment lining up. And you know, it's gonna happen to you too. You just gotta have the faith. You right. gotta tithe, uh, read the Bible. I mean, do all the things that he tells you to do. And it, it's, it's here, it'll happen. And, and, and we love God so much. Wow. It's been good, hasn't it? Already? He's faithful, isn't he? Amen. I love uh, to watch our testimonies, just as each couple gets up there and says what they say and, and just what God has done in their life. You know, God wants to repeat the miracles that we talk about. So the more we talk about those miracles, the more He wants to release and cause that power to come into your life, into my life, into the lives of those who haven't necessarily been touched yet in the way that they're expecting God to. So uh, I want to just give you a quick report about our covered event. Uh, we had over 15 people get saved during our covered event. Amen. 12 got baptized in water. Amen. That was, that's always fun. Uh, I don't know how many of you uh, had a hamburger or hot dog, but there was a, almost 1,200 hot dogs and hamburgers eaten. Amen. That's a lot of food. That's a lot of food. You know what I'm talking about? And then uh, we also we gave away uh, to our teachers, we gave away 28 teachers' gifts. We had 101 pairs of shoes given away. And then uh, we laid hands on 334 people. Amen. So let's just give the Lord praise in this house if you would. Amen. <clears throat> As you can see today, we're beginning a new series, Thrones. And uh, I'm really, really excited about this series and what God is going to say through it. Uh, you know, I think one of the things that makes uh, Path Point Fellowship Church so unique is the assignment on this body of believers. That God has called us to reveal the hidden mysteries of the kingdom of God. Uh, the knowledge of God that we need for these last days have been coded as mysteries in Scripture. Amen? Amen? And so, uh, they're wait, they've been patiently waiting 
for timing. They've been patiently waiting to be revealed so that when, at a time, that God's sons and daughters, when they begin to prophetically pray, not just pray, but prophetically pray, then they begin to unlock the secrets of those mysteries. Amen? Amen? In two weeks, we're going to begin a, 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 a class at 9.30 a.m. in the North Auditorium. It's called the Empower Class. I'll be teaching that first class. Amen? And uh, it's really in keeping with what we're talking about and what we've been talking about throughout uh, this year especially. And so I want you to avail yourself to that. Let us know if you're coming. Just go by and see Pastor Suzanne. Let, us, let her know if you're going to make that class or not uh, because uh, that will let us know how many people. Obviously, we only have so much space. So uh, I wanted to put that in front of you this morning. Amen. Um, this series, to me, began several years ago. It began at a time when uh, the Holy Spirit one day said to me, and how many, of you, how many of you want to know what God is saying to the spiritual leader that's in your life? I want to know, because if he's not telling me, what God is saying to him, then I'm wondering if he's even talking to him at all. Amen. I remember the day the Holy Spirit, he said this to me. He said, I have called you into the ministry of revealing the mysteries of the kingdom. And I'm not normally like this, but I ask him why. Because that's where my friendship with him is today. It hadn't always been there. There was a time in my relationship with him, I would dare not ask him why. When he would just tell me to do something, I'd just go do it. But in this case, I asked him why. And he said to me, first of all, because you possess the revelation of speaking from your spirit. You possess the revelation that you're a speaking spirit. And so when your, into, <clears throat> when your intellect <clears throat> speaks up and tries to say something, you say no, and you defer to your spirit man to speak instead. That has that is required great faith on your part, and yet you've developed great faith in that area, which is why most often you just speak out of your spirit. You just speak out of your spirit. Now, I don't do that when I'm talking about football, okay, <laughs> or something like that. But I do it when in ministry. I do it when I'm at the office, when I'm, when I'm meeting with people. It doesn't matter if it's a, if it's just a, it, it doesn't matter if it's business on the business side or if it's on the ministry side. It doesn't matter. I yield to my spirit man. I let the spirit man on the inside of me speak for himself. And I just defer to him. And I said, well, that's true. That's true. Out of that, he, he told me, he said, it's not only produced great faith, but it's also produced some awesome results in many people's lives as well as your own. And that's true. And that's validating. And then he said to me, and the second reason is because you have something in you, an urge, that just does not want to go back and repeat what you've already said. But because you have respected and honored your spiritual leaders and your spiritual fathers, and they told you to teach the basics and stay with the fundamentals and foundation, you keep looking back to that. You keep looking back to that, and you're hesitant about moving forward. And he said, but you need to know who put that in you to not want to repeat what you've already said. He said, that was me. So quit looking back. He said, obviously, these mysteries will, will be built upon the basics and the fundamentals will be interwoven in those mysteries amen you remember it was jesus who said in the 13th chapter of matthew verse 11 he said it's been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of god see those things have been hidden for us not from us 
I love the way the Passion says it. it. He says it this way. He explained Jesus speaking. You've been given the intimate experience of insight into the hidden mysteries of the realm of heaven's kingdom. But they haven't. They haven't speaking of the religious people. Amen. Notice what he said. And, and I'll just kind of paraphrase it here and kind of say it in, in this language. Every time you and I have an aha moment... Every time we're, we get together and we hear something that we've never heard before or we hear something in a way that we've thought, you know, I've thought that, but I've never been able to put, I've never been able to put, put it into, been able to communicate it, never been able to really make sense of it. But you know what? That makes sense. Every time we do that, then... It just lets you know you had an intimate, you just had an intimate experience with God. Every time a mystery is revealed, you just had an intimate experience with God. Every time. Amen. Now, uh, <clears throat> I said, Holy Spirit, I believe all that's true. I said, but you're going to have to validate this for me. You're going to have to show me something in Scripture that I don't know, and you're going to have to interpret that mystery for me on the spot. And he said, okay. And then that was it. And as I was studying out uh, the series, this seven-part series, I thought God's presence, God's power, God's plan was going to be like a two- or three-part series. It wound up being seven parts. Um, as I was studying that out and specifically studying out the life of Elijah, we looked at it one Kings, Second Kings, the book of Malachi. Remember the great prophet said, I'm going to send Malachi before that great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he is going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the children to the hearts of the fathers, lest the Lord strike the earth with a curse. And then we read about Elijah again. Here he's mentioned in Jesus' uh, day. When he said, if you can receive this truth, John the Baptist is Elijah. And then we saw it again in Revelation 2, verse 20. When Jesus said, speaking to the church of Thyatira, he said, I have this one thing against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel. And remember, Jezebel was Elijah's nemesis. Wherever Jezebel shows up, the spirit that was influenced, the wicked principalities that were influencing her, you will always find the, the spirit of God that was working with Elijah. You'll find those two spirits in conflict with one another. Darkness and light. Amen. I was studying that out, and I was reading uh, second chapter of Revelations, and then, I don't know, I got lost in it. And so I just went on and kept reading and read third chapter, fourth chapter, fifth chapter, sixth chapter, seventh chapter, eighth chapter, ninth chapter. And I got over in the tenth chapter, and uh, I just got so caught up in what I was reading. And then in the tenth chapter, verse 7, he says this. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he's about to sound, then the mystery of God is finished. As he announced to his servants, the prophets, and the Holy Spirit said, See, there's coming a day when the church is going to know every mystery of the kingdom of God, and it's going to become common knowledge. Amen. And we're going to operate and function in all those mysteries. Amen. There's coming a day when the church is going to step into, and all the mysteries of God are going to be complete. They're going to be finished. They're going to all be known. It's going to take great faith for us to, to operate in those mysteries. But it's also going to take great faith for us to receive those mysteries. Yeah. Now, did you notice he said the seventh angel? That means there were six angels prior to that. So I, then I started studying out what are each one of these angels saying. I'm going to save this for another time. It's very intriguing what these angels say. And it's very uh, intriguing what their assignments are. But notice... He said, when the seventh angel sounds. Well, obviously, the seventh angel hadn't spoken up yet because there's still mysteries yet to be revealed. Amen? Seventh angel, seven being the number for completion. Amen? In Jesus' day, well, let me put it like this. The mysteries of God have to be 
entered into through an imagination. This is why Jesus taught in parables. At a time where there were very few books, there were very few pictures, that obviously there were no movies, no moving pictures, Jesus would appeal to their imagination by giving them a story. Right. Amen? And so by, in telling that story, they would end, inside their mind like you do, they would start imagining this, they would get caught up in what he was saying and, and how he was saying it, and they would get drawn into it, immersed into it in their imagination, and there the picture would start moving forward of what he was saying. For instance, he said there was a father who had two sons. Talking about the prodigal son. He said there was a man who bought a field. There was a man who planted a vineyard. There was a man who was a sower of seed. And as he was sowing seed, some fell by the wayside. Some fell on thorny ground. Some fell on rocky ground. Some fell on good ground. Amen. And he went on to say that the first three types of ground, the wayside ground, the rocky ground, the thorny ground, didn't produce anything. But that which was good ground, the seed that was sown on that ground, it produced 30, 60, and 100-fold return. Now, how many people that your hearts are good ground for the seed of the Word of God to be sown into today? Amen. Amen. Say this after me. I receive, I receive the, mysteries the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Of the kingdom of God. Now, you don't have to guess whether you have good ground or not. Let me tell you one thing that will show you whether you do or not. Did you come here to listen today or did you come here to learn? You know, even people who listen, some of them are faking it. Huh? But if you came here to learn, it takes an extra effort to learn. It takes no effort to listen. The reason you want to learn is because you want to apply what you learned. Someone can listen and not have to apply it at all. And the Bible says that person there is deceived because they're not a doer. They don't, they don't take the word of God as applicable in their life. And they deceive their own selves. How do I know? I can reach into this invisible kingdom of God and pull out of it resources, 30, 60, and 100 fold return because I'm a learner. Right. <clears throat> I remember listening to Brother Hagen on Real to Real. Real to Real tapes. Yeah, I'm dating myself. <laughs> Put that big old Real to Real deck on my front seat of my car. And sit there and listen to that same reel over and over and over again. And then finally, one day, something came along called 8-track. <laughs> and then one day, something, oh, a mystery was revealed. And it, was, it came in the form of a cassette. <laughs> Technology was advancing. And I would just sit there and listen to him over and over. And then one day, I went to work for him. I just turned 21 years old. And uh, May 20th, 1981. One month, after I, at, one month after my birthday, my 21st birthday. And uh, in that, I would sit there. And I, would, I, I, I was there for a period of time. I was in the radio department. And back then, they sent reel-to-reel -reel tapes to the radio stations. He was on 600 stations. And I was the person who copied and duplicated all of those radio tapes every single week. And guess what? I got to QC them. And QC means I got to listen and learn. And I would hear him tell the same story over because for the next 20 years I worked for him. And over and over I'd hear him say tell the same stories and over and over and over again I'd learn something different about what he said in that story it takes extra extra effort to learn it takes nothing to listen if I'm going to pull out of that invisible kingdom of God 30, 60, 100 fold return I'm going to need to be on the edge of my seat inside here He's about to open his mouth. I'm speaking to Brother Cope. He's about to open his mouth. 
And I'm anticipating in such a way I'm going to take his very breath away. I've got to know what he knows. I've got to possess that kind of faith. I've got to experience those types of miracles. I've got to see the blind eyes open and the mute speak and the deaf hear. I've got to see that person get up off that garden and walk. The first step towards this, learn. Learn. What does he say? What is he saying? Amen. I believe you are a people that are so hungry and thirsty and desperate for the mysteries of the kingdom of God that you sit there in bated breath today, waiting, waiting. You see, Jesus would talk in parables, and the reason he did that is because he was revealing to those people then as he is today that he was saying the physical dimension is on a parallel, is a parallel universe, or is on a parallel line with the invisible kingdom of God. When you see nature, you are literally, it's literally teaching you what's happening, happening in the spiritual realm and what's available. When you see what's happening in the physical realm, you're actually seeing into the spiritual realm. Nature is preaching of God. He's showing, nature is telling us, the physical realm is revealing to us the spiritual condition that humanity's in today. Amen? And it doesn't take too much to figure out. Uh, you've heard me say this. It doesn't take too much or too, uh, we don't have to say much, to, to figure out the spiritual condition of people and the spiritual condition of of our nation and the spiritual condition of the world. Amen. This tells us something about what's going on. Now, today's session is Mystery of Thrones. And so there's something in, the, in me that just wants to... Well, we have to start with Revelations. We just have to. Uh, that word revelation means to lift the veil. Every time you read the book of Revelation, whether you know it or not, your spirit is very much in tune with what's being said. This is a, the book of Revelation, like no other book in the Bible, is a prophetic book. It's, it tells us all about the present and all about the future. Amen? And so well, I want us to delve into that today. Let's start with the first chapter of Revelation, verse 5. Look at what he said. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from among the dead, the ruling king who rules over the kings of the earth. Now, I don't want to get too deep today. I want to stay really shallow, okay? But I, I want you to make sure you understand when he talks about kings, he's not referring to presidents or the, or the monarchy or the heads of state, Okay? And we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this as we go further and explain this. But it stands to reason, and this will make sense to you, that every king has a throne room. And what, the reason it's called that is because of the throne that sits in that room. Amen? And it's here where all the information, let's take Jesus, who's king, and all the information of the kingdom of God, both in heaven and on earth, all that information comes through that throne room. One of the things, and, and it's there that he rules and reigns. One of the things that makes this unique is that in this throne room is an angelic choir accompanied by 24 elders that are in a circle around the throne with four very unusual looking creatures. And all of them are singing, praising, and worshiping him. See, King Jesus sits on that throne. Now, another thing that makes it unusual is that during the time where he's processing this information, he's making choices and decisions based on that information and knowledge, 
this angelic choir that's singing and all this worship and praise that's going on, simultaneously the prayers of God's people are rising up from the earth and they're infiltrate as incense, they're infiltrating this throne room. And some of those prayers are actually gathered and placed in the prayer altar, which is about only three or four steps from the throne. If, in fact, Jesus, if he would get up and he would take three or four steps, there's the prayer altar. And in that prayer altar are not just a few hundred prayer requests, but trillions of prayers that have come from God's people from the earth into heaven, into the throne room, as incense, gathered into that prayer altar. And there, this isn't just, like I said, a few prayers. This is trillions of prayers that have been gathered over the ages. They're there. And one day Jesus is going to look at an angel and he's going to say, now go ahead and scoop up those prayers and some of the coals that are in that prayer altar and I want you to throw them to the earth. And when they do, they're going to... And it's going to be quite a day that's a spectacle. It'll be spectacular when that happens. And we talked about that and read that in our first session of God's presence, God's power, God's plan called Chain Gang. Remember that? Now, Jesus is not a passive king. He's not in pursuit of pleasure. You know, like most men who have wealth are, or most people that have wealth, Jesus is not that way. In fact, Romans the 8th chapter, uh, Paul said that Jesus is doing this today. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yes, rather, it's Christ that's risen again, who's even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. So Jesus, as he hears these prayers and they infiltrate the throne room as incense, he joins in those prayers that are coming out of your mouth and out of my mouth. They, they've, they've risen up into the throne room because we prayed those prayers by faith. Amen? And then as he joins us in our prayers, he begins to make intercession. That word intercession just means to mediate. To be a mediator between your prayers and God's answer. Your request and God's response. And so he mediates. The Bible says he's the high priest of our words. So not, so not only the words we pray, but the words that we speak every day when we're not praying. Are your words that you're speaking every day, do they confirm your prayers? Are they actually opposite of what you're praying? Amen. Because he is the high priest of our confession of the words that are coming out of our mouth. This is what Jesus is doing right now. Amen. Another thing that makes this throne room unique is it's surrounded by a sea. There is never, ever, ever, nor has there ever been or ever will be a storm on that sea. There's not even a wave. It's sea, this sea is like glass. And there he's surrounded. This tells us that he's not frantic. He's not pacing the floor. He's not worried. He, he's, not, he, he's not in a panic. No, he's in total tranquility. And from complete peace, he makes every choice about your life and mine. Most often, when we're in the storm, we make bad decisions. Which is why in the storm, we need to go to him. Because in the storm, he is totally outside of it, knowing what you're going through. But you want him to tell you what to do. Jesus said, my people know my voice. And a stranger's voice they will not follow. In the storm, we always go to him. Always. Because it's from that pure tranquility that he gives us the right response, the right thing to do next. Amen? So, as we get up from the throne room, from the throne, and we go over, we see a balcony over here. And we go to that balcony because we hear these cheers. 
the, these loud sounds, noises. It sounds like, uh, 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 you know, the people at maybe a football game cheering for their team. And so we walk over the balcony, and far off, in, in the far off distance, we see what we could describe as a stadium, but it's not, in a, it's not built in a circular, uh, round type of stadium. This is built linearly, straight. And it's not just, you know, an NFL stadium seats about 100,000 people. Not this stadium. It seats billions of people. Who are these people that are making all this noise? What are they saying? What are they doing? Because they seem to be looking down upon the earth. They're your fathers and mothers or grandfathers or grandmothers. They're your relatives. They're your spiritual, spiritual forefathers that have gone before us that are in those stands. And they're not just observing us. But they can tell who's running their race. See, they've run their race. They've fought their fight. They've finished their course. They're in heaven's stands. And they're looking down at you. And they're looking down at anyone who's running their race by faith. Because to them, to you, or you, or I, we're illuminated in their eyes because we, have, we live in faith and by faith. They know who's running. My father and my mother are up there in those stands. But they're also joined with what Hebrews 11 chapter calls the, the heroes of faith. Those who made the hall of faith. David, Abraham, Sarah, the list goes on and on of those great faith giants that went before us. And there they are. They're not just looking at what we're doing. They're cheering us on, and they're saying, you can do this too. We ran our race, and we fought the good fight, and you can too. Get up when you fall down. Get up. Get up. Don't stay down. Get up, and let's go. Let's get back at it. Come on. Let's run this race. Come on. We're right here with you. Come on. Come on, Scott. Come on, Missy. Come on, Darren. Come on, Dee. Come on. You can do it. Get up and run that race. Now that tells us something. You're not in the race if you're sitting. You got to be running. Well, you, you don't understand, Scott. I, I'm going to retire in five years. Honey, don't sit down. You'll die. Don't sit down. You'll die. Get to running and keep running. Well, I can't do it. I don't have the strength to do it in his strength. Do it in his strength. And do it to and do it and run and finish your race and cross that finish line. Somebody give the Lord praise in this place. Amen. There they are cheering. They're clapping. They're shouting. They're, 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 they're saying, come on. You can do this. We come back in the throne room and and, and then we 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 hear this. What in earthly terms would be saws and hammers and metal. and So we go back to the balcony. We look in the opposite direction across that sea. And over there we see mansions. Mansions. They're not just built horizontally. There are millions of them. They're not just built horizontally. They're built vertically up into the skies. Remember what Jesus said. Right before he ascended into heaven, he said, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would tell you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'm going to come again, speaking of the rapture, so that where I am, you may be also. Amen. 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 Today, mansions are being built in heaven. I'm sure my mansion is being built Missy, will you live with me in heaven? Okay. <laughs> she said, no, I had enough of you here. <laughs> Mansions are being built. Amen. Occasionally, someone, a son or a daughter of God, that means a brother or a sister of Jesus, breaks, just busts in through. Those throne room doors, unannounced, because they have received the revelation, come boldly to the throne room of grace to find help in the time of need. They don't come in there hesitant. 
They don't come in there reluctant or fearful or afraid. They come in there boldly with full assurance. Full assurance. I belong here. I belong here not only because I'm a son or daughter of God or, or a brother or sister of God or of Jesus, but I'm also an ally king to the king of kings. Amen. I'm under and in alliance with the lordship and all of his authority, dominion, and domain. I'm a lord in his kingdom. I'm a king in his kingdom under his authority. Amen. Now, because uh, in earthly terms, there's no day or night in heaven. This goes on 24-7. And somebody may say, Scott, why are you so passionate? Why are you so intense as you explain this? Let me tell you, let me ask you, uh, why aren't you? I mean, since when have you gone on a beach vacation or a mountain vacation and not first gone to the Internet and looked at the reviews and looked at the pictures of the resort you were staying at, and yet you don't want to know what heaven looks like? Huh. Makes me wonder if you think you're going to go there or not. I want to know where I'm going and what they're, what they're doing. Because, you know, this isn't just one of those where you stay a week. This is an extended stay resort. <laughs> you know, like eternity. The Bible says there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You should so not want to go to hell. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the Revelations 19th chapter. And then we're going to pick up here next week. Then I saw heaven open, and suddenly a white horse appeared. The name of the one riding on it was Faithful and True. What did, it, what did uh, Charles Spurgeon tell us? The, 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 the person who has many titles wears many crowns. So here's two more titles of Jesus, Faithful and True. Notice he's going to confirm this because he says... And with pure righteousness, he judges and rides to battle. He wore many regal crowns. And his eyes were flashing like flames of fire. He had a secret name inscribed on him that's known only to himself. And when you read the book of Revelations, you'll find this, that when you get to heaven, there will be a name inscribed on your, phys on your body. And that name will only be known to you until such a timing in which you reveal it to others. Amen. Amen. Look at what he goes in and says. And he wore a robe dipped in blood, and his title is called the Word of God. Following him on white horses were the armies of heaven, wearing white, fine linen, pure and bright. A sharp sword came from his mouth with which to conquer the nations. And he will shepherd them. With an iron scepter. And he will trample out the wine in the winepress of the wrath of God. On his robe and on his thigh he had inscribed a name. King of kings and Lord of lords. It's Jesus who got the first tattoo. You just thought you were special. Remember what Hebrews 12 verse 2, it says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. That word looking is an action word. We could easily say, con constantly look. Consistently look at Jesus. Tragically, most Christians, they only look at what Jesus did. They look at him in the past tense. And this keeps them seeing him as a doctrine and a religion. You have to look at what Jesus is doing. Faith is now. What he's done is in keeping with what he's doing. But don't kid yourself, and I certainly won't kid myself. What Jesus has done pales in comparison to what he's doing right now and what he's about to do. When that veil is lifted... And every mystery 
that is decoded by his people and brought out into the light, and they begin to operate and function in those mysteries, bring us closer and closer and closer to him on that white horse. Somebody give him praise in his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, when you look at what Jesus is doing today, signs, wonders, miracles, and healings, they become easily expected and anticipated. And they begin to manifest frequently instead of occasionally. You expect him. You expect him to perform a miracle right. now. Amen. You expect that when somebody under the direction of the Holy Spirit lays hands on you, you expect that miracle to be performed in your physical body. Yes. When the Holy Spirit leads uh, uh, someone into a word of knowledge and they give you that word of knowledge and they speak what the Lord would say totally abandoning their own thoughts and just speak whatever it is the Holy Spirit would say to you. You expect what he said through that individual as a vessel. You expect for them for him to do what he said he would do. You expect it. You want to work it up? You know. Best way I know how to say it. You know in your knower it's a done deal. He's done it. It is finished. Amen. Amen. These mysteries that we've been talking about this year, and then the prophecy that he gave us. I looked all around me, only kings and lords. <laughs> We're going. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. Amen. And we're going to get to see signs, wonders, miracles, and healings that we've never, that yeah. humanity has never experienced before. Yeah. Amen. Because of these mysteries revealed. Can you imagine that every mystery revealed has another level of God's power on it? And it's true. And it's true. Amen. Look at your next step. Jesus is my king. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my King. Jesus is my Lord. Go ahead and close your eyes. Bow your head if you would. You're here today. It's not coincidence that you're here, even though God speaks in the language of coincidence. You're here for such... A time is this. In this moment, he wants to do something spectacular in your life. See, Jesus was the first born amongst the dead. And every single one of us that have come into relationship with him, we've also been born out of, out of, out of being dead. We were born out of death. That shows us how powerful he is that he can resurrect us out of that death. You're here today. You just want, there's just something that's happened to you. The Holy Spirit has ministered to you, touched your heart, pulled your heartstrings. And today you want to either dedicate your life or rededicate your life to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Let's all pray this prayer together. Just say, God, today I ask you to be my father. I've not known you that way yet. I ask you to forgive me. Cleanse me of all my sin, my mistakes and wrongdoings. I believe that Jesus is your son. I receive him into my life to lead the way from this day forward. I expect to hear him, to know him, 
and for him to know me. I confess these things in the name of Jesus. Thank you for writing my name in the Lamb's book of life. That I'm going to heaven and not hell. Amen. Keep your head bowed and your eyes closed. If you prayed that prayer and you know you dedicated or rededicated your life to the Lord today, go ahead and raise your hand. There's nobody looking. See that hand? Anybody else? See those hands across this, this auditorium, across this audience? You can put your hands down. Would you look up here and give those who made that decision a big hand clap this morning? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and stand if you would. Now from this day forward, and we're going to, how I many know faith comes by hearing? Yes, hearing what? Yeah, but whatever area of the Word of God you're hearing is the area that your faith will grow in. This is why we have to teach on a series like this. Amen? So your faith will grow. From this day forward, I want you to begin. I'm just going to warm you up to this. From this day forward, I want you to see yourself as a king and a lord. On his thigh was inscribed, King of kings and Lord of lords. Well, if that's how Jesus sees me as a king and a lord, that's how I have to begin to see myself. Amen. Amen. Well, king's not broke. King's not busted and disgusted. King's, king's not whining. Amen. Amen. King has authority. Let's see what that is next week. Let's look into the depths of this mystery. Give the Lord praise one more time. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're the head not to tell. You're above and not beneath. You're blessed. And everything you put your hand to. The King of kings and the Lord of lords goes before you this week. And causes everything you put your hand to to prosper. You will increase. You will thrive. You will flourish. You will multiply 30, 60, and 100 fold return. This is your day. This is your year. This is your moment to rise up and be the king that he's called you to be in Jesus' name. Amen. This week, point someone to the path. You're dismissed.